Bob Pass. We're back here for another Burlington Parks and Recreation COVID-19 update. I'm here with Burlington Parks and Recreation Director Brendan Egan. He's going to fill us on what's going on in the department and how things are going. Brendan, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me again. So, Brendan, just talk a little about how you guys are getting ready for the upcoming summer programs. Sure. Uh, so, we're, we're, uh, we've been combing through the uh, guidelines from the state for the last few weeks. We um, added some uh, registration last week for our park place, um, some additional registration. Um, so, we have our traditional park place program, our traditional Simons, Club Simons program, tennis lessons. Um, and then um, we also have gymnastics and um, we also have a preschool art program that's going to take place as well, um, all meeting the state guidelines and uh, working on a virtual orientation for our staff and uh, getting them trained in, in what this summer is going to bring with, um, you know, COVID-19 uh, guidelines being in place and how those will affect um, you know, each program, but then also looking ahead to, to phase three, which I know the governor announced his plan phase two B the other day. And uh, with, you know, in, indoor, some indoor dining and things like that. Um, and also hinted at phase three wouldn't start at the earliest until July 6th. So, um, which is the first day of our, our summer programs. Um, and, you know, again, when, when he announces when phase three will begin, we're going to have to go through those guidelines as well and make sure that, you know, we can make the appropriate adjustments to our programs. But we're getting excited. I mean, it's, it's summertime and, and uh, the staff has really, really been working hard. And how many people are allowed to register for these programs? Any specific number you guys have? Sure. Uh, we're limiting our gymnastics to 10 our park place program, uh, I'm sorry, to six, our park place program to 10, um, as well as our Club Simons program. And in our, that's the max, so um, 12 including instructors. So we're, we're keeping two instructors with each group. Um, so we're doing 10 at a time. So um, we're, you know, again, we, we're trying to keep everyone employed from last year um, without, um, you know, they may not be in the same position, but, um, or program, um, but we're trying to make sure, you know, we're able to employ our staff from last year before we add any new. And what will phase three look like for the department itself? Like, I know, are you still allowing people in? Are you still waiting for that process? Yeah, so um, we're, not, we're not seeing residents in the building. We are allowed to do programming, um, you know, in we're using rooms that have uh, exterior entrances. Um, but, um, we don't know what phase three is going to entail. Um, we hope he, you know, the governor gives us a couple more, uh, days, doesn't release it on a Saturday and say, Monday, these things can happen. Because as I've said before, when we've talked, it doesn't work that easy for us. You know, it's not like, oh, well, I'm going to release them on Saturday or even Friday and you have two days and then they go into effect. It's, you know, it takes more than that. We have to make make sure we can follow those guidelines that we've trained, you know, the staff that will work in those programs that the guidelines affect um, and make sure they're comfortable with it and understand the rules. So there's a lot, a lot that goes with it. And are there any new updates on concerts on the common? There aren't. We're hoping, again, we've talked about it a couple times. Phase three looks like um, we'll be able to, to do something in, um, with moderate size groups. And there are there any new guidelines for staff and public should know about what in Burlington? As far as recreation programs, you know, our, our um, fields are available for um, youth sports. So Little League is starting. Um, they have put together a plan. I'm uh, working with youth lacrosse. They have a plan for um, later, a little later in the summer, July and August. Um, and it's practices only. That's all they can do. Practice with same, you know, a limit of, of um, 10 players and two coaches. They have to be socially distant. Uh, they can't use the dugouts, um, those type of things. They have to stay, stay in the same group. So if a team had 14 players, they'd have to divide them however they divide them, but those groups can't mix. Um, you know, there, there are, um, um, you know, some responsibilities 
for the for the groups uh, that are are using the facilities and what they have to do. And they've presented their plan. They've worked with the Board of Health on it, and we've reviewed it as well to make sure everything works for us as the um, operator of the facility of the field. Um, but so you should see little league and and uh, softball being played uh, fairly soon. Not not games, practices, uh, not played in the sense of a game. So no games, no scrimmages, no umpires or officials. Um, and uh, if they can't, you know, socially distant, distance each other, you know, from each other in a drill, they have to wear masks. Just cleaning things that have to take place. Everyone has to bring their own equipment, really limit the shared equipment. If there is any, it has to be sanitized between use. So there'll be no games at all, just practices. Not in phase two, no no games, hopefully in phase three. And Brandon, just lastly, just talk a little about what do you hope to see as we enter summer? I'd love to not see a spike, um, and I'd love to see, um, you know, an increase in participation um, levels and the guidelines and, uh, you know, again, some return, return to typical activities and, and people out enjoying themselves responsibly. Um, you know, we, we definitely have some different guidelines and criteria to be out in public now as opposed to summers of the past. And um, it, it's going to be hard for people to adjust, but I think the last three months people have been adjusting. So um, hopefully, hopefully um, we can follow those guidelines and in, in the cre criteria set forth by the state and get through the summer and fall without any any spikes. That's what I hope. And Brennan, is there anything else you want to add? I don't think I have anything else to add. It's, you know, I just want to, I'm very thankful for the staff that we have, um, the program staff combing through all the guidelines. Um, it doesn't just affect the programs that we're running with our staff, but also um, the programs that come in with, you know, like top secret science, circuit makers, um, you know, any uh, soccer camps or anything that come in, it affects them all. So, they, you know, they're not just working on the programs that we're running with our own staff that we hire staff for, but they're, you know, they've been working with these outside vendors that provide programming for us. Um, and then our fitness programs and, and uh, you know, doing those virtually still for, for the time being. Um, and then our maintenance staff, you know, out there making sure the trash is emptied, the grass is cut. It, it's, um, it's easy to sit back and say, oh, that field looks like it, you know, should be cut and that, and that infield should be groomed or that. But, you know, we have a lot of responsibilities for grounds in the summer and um, we have our some seasonal staff on now. So we're getting caught up and staying, um, you know, on a... Um, you know, regular schedule now. So uh, both sides of the department have been doing a, a tremendous job to keep us up to date on all the COVID things and making sure we're, we're following the guidelines set forth by the state. Well, Brent, I want to thank you for coming on for another recreational update. Um, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Robert.